Hey everybody, this video is going to be for background to help us find derivatives of the natural log function and the natural exponential function. So before we can even look at the calculus ideas of the derivatives of each of these two functions, uh, we need to remind ourselves about some background information to help us in our work with these derivatives and things that we do with them. So this video is all about some prior knowledge. All right, let's do a little quick function review. Okay, and what I mean is let's look at the idea of the um, exponential functions, the category of exponential functions and the category of logarithmic functions. And just real quickly here, and to the best of my ability, okay, just to remind you about an exponential function, uh, let me just pick on uh, this perhaps exponential function right here. Okay, and I'm going to call it y equals 2 to the x. It has a base of 2 and exponent of x. So this is an exponential function. Okay. It's not a power function where a power function has a base of x with a num numeric exponent. It has a, a numeric base and a power exponent. So it's an exponential function. So you've studied these in, in past classes and this is the shape. Um, let's look at another exponential function. Let's look at perhaps y, uh, y equals 3 raised to the x power. Okay, Where this function in here is y equals 3 to the x. Okay. Let's also look at one more. Let's look at y equals 10 to the x power. So the larger our base becomes, the more vertically stretched our graph is. So right in here I'm going to call this y equals 10 to the x. So we're looking at reviewing exponential functions. And I just want to kind of note, point out right here this common point that they all pass through. I want you to think about that for just a second. The ordered pair 0, 1 belongs to all of these parent function, if you will, exponential functions. Uh, that is because if x is 0, okay, no matter which function you're dealing with here, if x is 0, anything to the 0 power is going to be 1. So they all share that point 0, 1. Okay? And depending upon the base, we'll determine what they look like, um, how stretched they are. Um, so that's just an exponential review right there. Okay, let's look at the inverses of each of these. You might recall from prior classes that if you consider the line y equals x and you were to reflect across the line y equals x, um, we have what we uh, call inverse functions. Okay, so one other thing you might remember is that if 0, 1 is on the function, then we switch the x and y and 1, 0 would be on the inverse. So let me attempt to draw the inverse function graphically for y equals 2 to the x. So it might look something like this. So that when I fold along y equals x, y equals 2 to the x lays on top of this inverse function. You may recall also that the class of functions that are inverses of exponentials are log functions. So it's log base 2 of x. Likewise, I can draw the inverse of the other two the other two exponential functions that I had here. So the name of this, this, these functions would also be log functions, log base 3 of x. And the last one here, it would be the one closest to the positive y-axis. Oh, sorry, the one closest to the positive x-axis because it's the one that's closest to the uh, positive y-axis here. Okay, so this last function right here is the inverse of 10 to the x. So it's going to be y equals log base 10 of x. And you might remember that uh, this is called our common log. And so the understood base is 10. And so in that case, we drop the base of 10. Okay. So just a quick review of exponentials and logarithmic functions here. Okay. Um, we're working towards finding derivatives of these two, but eventually we'll also want to, in a later video, uh, we're going to want to find derivatives of um, regular exponentials, if you will, and regular log functions, not the special natural log and natural exponential. Okay, so just a quick review. Okay, um, let's go ahead and take a look at these two functions right here. Okay, so y equals the natural log of x. I want to look at these two in a little more detail outside of this whole group of functions right here. So I'm going to start with the exponential y equals e to the x. Uh, you very well may remember 
that E is approximately 2.71. It behaves similar to pi in that pi is irrational, 3.14 is what we use to approximate it. So for E we use 2.71. So if you're going to sketch E to the X, okay, it's going to fall somewhere in between these two graphs right here. If the base is 2.71, it'll likely be closer to Y equals 3 to the X than Y equals 2 to the X. Uh, but it'll have the same kind of basic shape. So let me see if I can try and produce that graph. We'll just work with it. So we call this y equals e to the x. It's the natural exponential function. Okay, if we drew its inverse, it would cross through 1, 0, and perhaps look something like this. Okay, and like we did over here, we can name this and we can say, well, this is y equals log base e of x. Okay, well, this one's so special that what we do is we give it a special name, and instead of calling it log base e, we call it the natural log of x. So these two names right here name the same function, just like these two right here equations name the same function. Okay, so we have the natural log and we have the natural exponential function, and that's where our work is going to be in these next couple of videos, but just a little bit of background about, about these. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to jump forward into some calculus, and, I, and what I want to look at is the, the idea graphically of the derivatives of the natural exponential and the natural log. And then we'll go away from the calculus and go back to Algebra 2 for a little bit and then come back. All right, so let's consider y equals e to the x. Now we know what the general shape looks like. Okay, and right here I'm just going to use this opportunity to review. Review curve sketching sketching f prime or if you will y prime in this case um, with regard to y. So given y, let's now sketch a graph of y prime based on what we just did previously. All right, notice there's no mins or maxes. There's no zero rates of change so we'll have no um, x-intercepts here. This function is rising across this entire graph so that means the slope graph will be positive located in quadrant one and two. Noticing some, some uh, slope values. Slope here is zero, it's increasing. The slope here, the graph is pretty steep, so it's going to be pretty large. So at corresponding x's, I'm going to plot y values okay, from the slopes. So I want you to just kind of take a look at this sketch of y prime. You may be thinking to yourself, well, it looks like the graph itself that we started with, and it absolutely does. This is one of those unique cases where the exponential function, the natural exponential function, okay, is its own derivative. It's kind of interesting. Okay, and we produce this graphically. Now, when we get to our calculus work with the natural exponential function, we're not going to just be finding derivatives of the natural exponential. Now, that'd be too easy. I wish it was that case. But we're going to be looking at a composite natural exponential function. And you might remember hearing that word composite uh, in the context of us using chain rule. Okay, let's come over here look at the natural log function. Okay, let's see if we can produce a graph okay, of the natural log function based on our uh, previous work with sketching. Okay, so let's look at y prime. We may or may not recognize the function that we're going to graph. Alright, so we notice there's no part of the graph over here, so we're not going to have the derivative over here. No mins or maxes on this graph, no x-intercepts. Okay, the graph starts out pretty steep, so that would be a large y value. Okay, and by the time it gets around right here, the steepness isn't so much, and then it just starts to flatten out, and never approaching zero. Okay, so kind of drawing a quick sketch of the slope graph. Okay, it appears to be another exponential function, but you might recognize this as one of the branches of the reciprocal graph, and indeed, we're going to figure out, learn, Okay, that the derivative of the natural log function is indeed 1 over x, but only in quadrant 1, where x values are greater than 0. So um, just kind of informally through past work that we've done in calculus, shared with you the derivatives for these parent functions. Uh, but in our work in another video, we're going to be finding derivatives of composite natural exponential functions and composite natural log functions. And we'll look, look and see how to handle that. All right, now returning to some more of a review here, it's, uh, we're jumping outside of calculus, and what we need to review are some previous log properties. OK, 
Okay, actions we can take with regard to log functions, correct actions mathematically that we can take with regard to log properties. And we're going to need to review these properties to help us with our work um, when we're going to find the derivatives okay, of log functions. Okay, there are three um, log properties that you um, learned about. One was product. Right, so the product property tells us that um, if we're dealing with a logarithmic function, no matter the base, the base could be e, 7, 12, doesn't matter. So I'm going to put an a here. If I have a product, let's say I have x times y times z, that it might be helpful in some cases for us to use the product property and break this apart. That is, the log of this product is equal to the sum of the logs of the individual factors. So the log of... Um, x plus the log of y plus the log of z. That's a plus. So that's called our product property. So we have a set of factors here. We have three of them um, that we can simply add uh, the individual logs. Okay, You might remember the quotient property. property. Okay, that just said that if we're dividing, let's just say we have the functions r and s, that it might be helpful for us to um, subtract instead. Log of base a r minus log base a of s. Okay, and something else you learned from the past was the power property. That's a coefficient, that's a multiplier, that's a constant multiplier. It doesn't have to be a constant multiplier, but it is. It's um, 7 log base A x. Okay, what you could do is if this is a coefficient, you can actually shift it as an exponent. Okay, so if we're dealing with log functions, these are some of the things that we can do. These are some of the properties. So what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to write down some of the examples that we might want to just practice with. I'm going to write them down and then you might want to pause the video and attempt to uh, apply the properties to each of these and then turn the video back on. All right, here are a few examples that we might want to start with in applying our log properties. Okay. All right, number one, um, just kind of study what we call the argument or the angle or what follows the natural log. This all belongs to natural log. I'm seeing a product of two factors, x times this uh, square root here. It looks like I can use the product property. You might want to first do a little rewrite on it, though. This is x times quantity x squared minus 6 to the 1 half power. Okay, and then I can see that I have several properties here. Okay, I have natural log. Okay, and then I'm going to have of x plus natural log quantity x squared minus 6 to the 1 half. Okay, and it looks like I can, apply, I can apply one more property here. So if I did, that would be natural log of x plus, I can take that exponent on that angle and shift it to the coefficient position. So this is plus 1 half natural log x squared minus 16. Okay, so just reviewing some of the log properties. Okay, for this function right here, okay, I'm just kind of studying it. I'm looking at natural log with the natural log uh, inside of it. This is not a product in here to where I could apply the product property. Um, this is actually just one item in here. However, this item in here may be able to um, be simplified using uh, one of the log properties. So what I have here is natural log, and I'm going to go inside here and say, you know what? I have a power property that says I can move that 5 in front. So 5 times the natural log of x. Okay, now can I take this 5 and move it to the front here? Now I hope you're thinking, no, you can't do it. And you're absolutely right because it has to stay right in here. We can't take out a constant multiplier to the front if it's part of the angle, so to speak, or the argument. Okay, um, I guess we should just kind of talk through these. Look at this problem right here. Um, this is just simply, yes, I can use one of the properties. It's the power property and pull the 4 in front. Okay, 
Look, contrast, compare and contrast three and four. Um, four actually has an exponent that's on um, the entire function here. It's not just on the angle or the argument to where I can apply the power property. I'm not able to apply property number number three because the four is on the entire function. Okay, so um, in this case, what else could I do? Real, really nothing. But I did want to point out that you may see from the authors. Um, that that 4 works just, that power works just like it does on a trig function. You can pull the 4 off and on the trig function. Attention in the building, attention in the building. You are parked. All right. Uh, you may see that uh, several more problems have uh, appeared uh, at this point if you wanted to uh, write them down and then just attempt to see if there's any other properties for logs that you could apply um, just to self-assess. I think that'd be a great idea. Okay. All right, maybe you've thought through some of these and perhaps you have. I just want to look at real quick number five with you. Okay, when you look at number five, notice I don't have a product. I don't have a quotient. Um, I can't use the power property because I have multiple terms in here. So actually, you're finished. This is done. No properties can be applied here. So it's important to know when we can and when we cannot use properties. Um, look at number seven. Okay, seven, we cannot, you might be thinking, well, I can use the quotient property. However, I can't because um, the natural log is not out in front um, of this quotient here like it is in the previous problem and then in the, in the following problem here. So actually, um, no properties here on number seven. Okay, and hopefully you can kind of look and see that number six and eight, we are going to be able to use some of the log properties. So at this point, like I said, you might want to, if you already have great attempted it, um, then here in just a second, the answers will flash up. All right, let's see if we can kind of look at each of these two remaining problems. Hopefully nothing's kind of disappeared on me. I'm applying the log properties here. This is the quotient property, so natural log of the numerator minus natural log of the denominator. No further properties can be applied here. Okay, eight is the most complicated one. The first thing you might want to do is remove the radical, changing it to a rational exponent, like I did here, one-third. And then after that, the first thing you want to do is you want to use the power property. Notice this one-third is, you know, on the argument here. So we're actually, we're not doing any differentiation. We're just doing a shift of one-third into the front here. I don't reduce this exponent by one because I'm not doing any, dif any differentiation here. Just moving the one-third to the front, okay, and, and then I'm left with the inside here, okay, that is a three. Okay. And then coming over here, I just noticed that the one-third is going to be applied to all pieces here when I use the rest of the properties. So in the numerator, we have a product. So natural log of x plus the natural log of the other factor. And then we also have a quotient, so then we're subtracting the natural log of the denominator. And it appears that that should have been a plus there. Okay, And no further properties can be applied. So just a real good review of some di different things that we're going to need to help us in our work with uh, derivatives of the natural log and the natural exponential function.